Welcome to the Money Over 50 podcast, brought to you by Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue from Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. This information is general in nature and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation, or needs. Therefore, you should consider whether the information is appropriate for you and your personal circumstances. If you require personal advice, please contact Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. Here are your hosts, Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue. Welcome to Money Over 50 with Dallas and Michael. Dallas, uh, today you're here to talk about why we don't charge a fee for our first meeting with you. Thanks, Michael. Um, yeah, well, I literally just just finished, just wound up a, a first meeting with uh, with a prospective new client. And um, it was a, a very energizing experience and it got me motivated to get in the booth and, and explain to people because so essentially what happened with these people is they they own a they own a business and they'd rung around and tried to book a meeting with um, various different professionals and you know uh, with a lawyer and with an accountant and, and with a couple of different financial advisors and the reality is they they were talking about trying to work out whether to sell their business or maintain some of it or sell it to their employees or and it's not really something that we that we do and, and so it did relate a bit to us in terms of there was an aspect of it that was their retirement planning and you know how long away are you from retirement? How long do you want to keep working for? How could you potentially structure mm-hmm. the sale um, so that you minimise tax on that? What would you then do with the sale proceeds in order to draw a rising income stream in retirement? All these sorts of things. But um, so we'd had the first meeting, went for about uh, ended up going, going a bit over normal time, went for an hour and a half, and at the end of that meeting they were, they were just ecstatic at. Uh, the information that I'd been able to provide and the clarity that I'd been able to to give them and and just a different way to think about a few different things. They don't actually they don't need us on an ongoing basis. They don't they're not mm. going to become a client. There there is no there's no next steps from here. They just needed to go back and talk to their accountant about a few different things, and th- and they kept trying to offer to pay me because they were going, and that, that's been great. We've got a lot out of that. You know how, how much is your time, and it led to a really a really interesting conversation with them about. About basically is explaining that often when when I, I think how I think about this is people's fear or people uh, people's concern is that they're going to go and have a meeting with any professional and that they are going to number one waste their time number two waste their money and and number three be be pressured into to doing something they don't want to do and so by its very nature by offering our first meeting at at no cost or obligation and just focusing as as we do on just providing information to people and going this is these are some of the things that you could think about they left with a spring they said they were really happy about that they 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 were ecstatic and and you know the, the more mercenary part of me goes this is great because they'll they'll go and tell 10 of their friends how, how good mm-hmm. I am and and they'll probably all come in and meet with me and some of them will actually be clients but it just got me thinking about the fact that that's the way that we think of it and, and the way that we break that up and, and it's not the point of this podcast is not that no one should charge for a first meeting it's just the, to get that point across that I, I think that that's that's what the, the sticking point is for a lot of people in that meeting is is the, the, the downsides of it and so that's that's to me why we don't charge for that first meeting is because at the very least we hope to make that a, a positive experience for, for us and for the clients and, and by not charging a fee you're sort of taking away that side of it. It's purely just we're here to provide some information to you and to give you an insight into what we can and can't do and allow you to then make a decision or we can then find out whether we can help you or add some value on an ongoing basis. Yeah, look, Dallas, we a um, couple of things that, that come to mind there uh, from me is, uh, number one, uh, I wouldn't feel right about charging someone for a first meeting because I don't even know anything about them until they've actually walked through the door. Yeah. And I, I may be able to offer a lot of value. I may be to, uh, able offer to offer no value yeah. um, until we actually see their situation yeah. and talk to them about what they're looking to achieve yeah. and what's important to them. That, that's, that's we we may be able to actually offer no value. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't no. feel right <laughs> charging them. A, a fee. Well, it's uh, an interesting one because you're right. You, you would either whatever you charge that first meeting, you would either be undercharging or overcharging. Someone might come mm. in. So these guys might may well have come in and 
based on this, I might have sort of shrugged my shoulders and gone, geez, I, got, I don't know, like, you need to go and talk to your accountant about it. I might have been able to do nothing, in which case whatever I would have charged them would have been too much. Or mm. in this case, I could add a fair bit of value and I could help them a lot and they would have been quite happy to pay you know, quite a bit of money. But you, you can't, I, 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 I think you're right, like we, when you don't know in advance what you, what you are going to be able to provide to people, it's very tricky to arrive at a, a set price because by its nature, some are going to be underpaying and some are going to be overpaying. And the second part of that is that we we actually, we're not geared to charge an hourly rate. Yeah. We're geared to charge a value rate. Yeah. And what I mean by that is that we don't charge for our time. We charge for our value provided. Um, we've become experts at a, at a at quite a narrow niche. Mm. Uh, and yeah, typically... Um, a couple that are aged between 50 and 55 with 500000 to $700,000 worth of, of, of savings. retirement savings at that point in time, um, we, we, we're experts at getting them to $2 million. Yeah. You know, by the time they, they want to retire, we're experts at they're never paying another dollar of tax again once they've been retired. There. We're experts at, mm. at, at picking up every single tax deduction along the way. Yeah. Um, with that example... That you used before the Del- uh, Dallas, uh, these people who own, uh, my understanding is multiple businesses, yeah, and have uh, have they're a long way away from being in the position of of yeah. us being able to help them at this point in time. Yep, we're not business brokers. We're not, um, yeah, we're not accountants. Yeah, we're not accountants yep. in terms of the not business the, advisors. Yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't. I mean, there's specialist business advisors that actually yeah. pull businesses apart and say, okay, well, this yeah. business is valued at this much and yeah. this you have you know, these staff here that yeah. may want to yeah. you know, may want to actually buy it. You have these external yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. other businesses that may want to absorb your business, all of these types of things. So because <clears> – <throat> excuse me for a minute. Because they see those scenarios – All the time. All the time. They become experts in that particular niche. Yeah. And, uh, and 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 uh, again, we wouldn't feel right in charging someone no. for our time, not knowing if we could actually add any value whatsoever and, in that first meeting. And that's exactly what happened in this situation. Is is that you know, we after this goes game at the at the end of essentially that first hour of the meeting, it was it was this, you know their options were either do something else with the business or sell it for two million dollars. Now, mm. if they had said at the end of that hour. Actually, yeah, with we are gonna we are just gonna sell the business for two million dollars, and 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 then what? And that was kind of where we left. So if if that is the road that you go down, then then yeah, that that then ties directly into our our niche and our thing of okay, well you've you've got to your two million dollars. How do we how do we structure the sale of that? How do we use the proceeds? How do we get that money invested in the most tax effective way? That you know that, that there is a lot that we can do at that point in time, but. You basically had we had to go through an hour to to work out that that's actually not what they're going to do, what they should do based on this situation and and given that that's not what they're going to do, I'm not I'm not the person that they need to be talking about this with over the course of the next few years. So, but yeah, I think that's a, that's a great way to to think of it is that it's it's not and there's no knock on businesses that do um, charge an hourly rate. You know what I mean? Like we were just having this discussion about. In, in that meeting where they were very appreciative, very thankful because, it's, you know, you, you wouldn't go to a lawyer and not have them charge you for an hour. And I sort of said, yeah, that's that's true, but the lawyer the lawyer's not set up for that. That's not what their, mm. their business model is selling is selling their time, mm. whereas we, we think of it as our business model is to, uh, like you say, it, it's a it's a value rate thing where if we can, if we can based on our knowledge and our expertise, if we can add a lot of value, then... then Sure, we can we can charge a fee, and there's a lot of work we can do with people. But if we can't, then we're not we're not in the business of selling selling time by the minute. So, where the analogy that I that I thought of was, it, it's a bit like getting a builder around to do a quote. Is sort of how I think of our first meeting, where you, you might have an idea of something that you want to do at your house, and and you go right. I've got my mate who's a builder. I'll get him to come over, and I'll say to him, Hey, this is roughly what we're thinking about doing. Your builder might, might might look at it with you for twenty minutes and then go, "No, don't do that. That's a terrible idea. That's mm. going to cost three times what you think, or it's going to not play out the way you think it is, or don't do it that way. Do it this other way entirely, or you don't actually need a builder. You need a you need a plumber, or you don't need a builder. You need a something else. So, 
and and for that reason, you know, builders don't builders don't tend to charge to to come and have a meeting with you and talk about some extension or some renovation mm-hmm. or some building that you want to do. It's it's sort of accepted that uh, they they're giving up that time in order to look at the situation with you and go, you know, do you does this make sense for you to keep, continue to push down the road of doing this this work? And if so, am I the right person for you to engage in in order to do that? And that's that's a bit more how I think about our first meeting. So tell us more about that particular meeting you had. So so you said that they left ecstatic yeah. these people. So well, tell tell um, what do you think that is? Uh, it was interesting. Uh, and that, that's why I, it was also part of, I guess, the, the not charging thing. In a weird way, it helps because you are then completely, uh, i got to get my, my English correct here, you're disinterested, not uninterested. So they, mm. they were really lovely people and it was, a, it was a very interesting situation they were in. Because I'm removed from the situation and, and didn't know the background and didn't know the, the the business, and I didn't know their story, and I didn't know about all the, the you know all the rest of it. I was I was interested in in them and and in being able to provide the right advice to them, but I was disinterested in that I didn't actually care what they did. If that makes yes. sense, so I didn't I had no skin in the game either way. I wasn't whether they sell the business on the open market or go and do something else entirely, or you know sell this property or buy this property or do whatever. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I was far enough removed from their their personal life and from and from their their situation that I could give completely unbiased um, a third party perspective on on a lot of things that. Uh, and I think that's what happens all the time when people come in to meet us for for the first time. They they tend to have things that they've been chewing on, particularly couples, where well, these guys have been thinking about this and chewing on this and discussing it amongst themselves for for a long time and they're almost too close to the problem so that they can't they can't sort of see the forest for the trees in a lot of situations and and there was just a couple of things that i was able to break down and go well you're thinking of it in this way i would actually separate that out that's not that's not as big of an issue as you think it is but but this part is and and you know you think you think it has to be one or the other here you could actually do a blend of these two and it was just it wasn't like i say it's not we're not business advisors. I'm not a business broker. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a CFO. It was just that because I was far enough removed, you know, we, we have an understanding of many different basic financial concepts that I could kind of know and know enough to be able to give a perspective. But was far enough removed and and had a high enough level view that I could drag them back a bit out of the weeds and go, let's let's get back to what the main problem is here that 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 we need to resolve. So. That was, I think, what they got a lot of value out of was that I didn't actually, I didn't provide them with any answers at the end of that hour and a half. I just went, mm-hmm. here's a different way to potentially think about some of the things that you're thinking about. And, and they're now going to, the next step for them is to book in with, with their accountant, who's sort of their part-time CFO, to go, okay, well, we know that these are, the, these are, the, these are some of the options available to us. These are some of the things that we thought it were an issue that, that maybe now that we think about it and as they're verbalizing it to me, they realise that that's not that big of an issue. Mm-hmm. We know what we need to go and focus on, and, and we can talk about that with the professional who 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 is actually the the expert in that area. Yeah, so you 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 in, in a way helped uh, filter them through one of the one of the levels of decision making that they need to yeah. to make, yeah. and um, and uh, really. Uh, disregard what they did what they didn't need what yeah. wasn't important. Yeah. Um, you help them. You help them work that out, yep. and then work. Yep. You help them hone in on what they actually needed to do at the next stage to yeah, that's right. regress through. And that's what I say. We were uh, um, an energizing, and, and that was the, the joke. Is they, they kept trying to offer to pay, and I kept saying no because they in an hour and a half they'd had they got a lot of value out of that. But as I said, there wasn't really there wasn't anything that they needed me for but what what they had they they then had a bit of a pathway of okay these are the, these are the things that we need to go on the approach mm. next and, and i think uh, a point that i sort of had touched on there as well but one that that we see all the time is and we've talked about this is by its very nature sometimes people just sitting down and verbalizing by, because you're sort of removed, people have to verbalise to you the mm. situation they're in and, and the problems as they see them. You often find that as people are explaining these things, they're getting it straight in their head and they're sort of resolving the problem as as they talk it through, mm. which is 
again, one of those things where some of the value that you that you add in that first meeting is just by being you literally just sitting there, and someone has mm. to order their thoughts and explain it to you. And and as they do that, they kind of resolve the problem. And so they go, okay, well, thanks for resolving that problem for me. That's that's I, I, now I've got that straight in my head. You haven't you maybe haven't even given any advice. So I don't. You know, how would you charge <laughs> for that? You know, for the role that you play there. So yeah, that that's one that we. That's one that we often, I think, help in that first meeting. But on an ongoing basis, you know, that's that's a big thing is just the fact that people have to structure their thoughts and organise their thoughts and actually think about what is it that I want and what's important to me and what are my fears and concerns and verbalise that to another human mm. being. It makes you it makes you organise those thoughts a, a bit more than, than probably what we normally do. Taking the time to take the time. Mm. As, uh, as there's a... A, a local radio announcer here Talk in town, a Logan. community radio station, and I don't know if he stole it from anyone else, but <laughs> but, it, but he used to say it. I think it's a brilliant saying: you have to take, take the time, time to, to take, take the time. time. Yep. So um, they they yeah by the by the very nature of you sitting yep. there yeah uh, for an hour and a half yep. with someone then uh, in a couple in particular, I think in, in a couple yep. within a couple situation, it's, it's really really valuable because you um. Your facilitator of communication, yeah. in 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 many in in many aspects, and, yeah. and you're right. They have to. Um, uh, I know a lot of the communication between myself and my wife is 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 assumption, yeah. uh, <laughs> assumption based. It's yeah. it's yeah. it's not necessarily verbalizing things. Yeah. So so um, because you're a third party that doesn't know them yeah. at all, yeah. they have to communicate that that yeah. to you. Yeah. Um, Certainly, uh, from a from a point of view of uh, again, yeah, charging anyone. F- one of the worst things for us ever uh, would be the thought that we're charging either a prospective client or an existing client for for something that they're not getting value out of. Mm-hmm. Now we may think we're giving them value, and yeah. we know that we are. Yeah, you know, we give our clients value. Um, it's two way street. They actually have to follow the plan yeah. to get value. So we've had in the situation before. In the past, where where um, existing clients um, haven't followed the plan, and we've just felt really, really, um, it, it's just been a, a like not a good feeling of saying, yeah. okay, we, we're we're charging you for for something, yeah, and you're and, not getting a result, yeah, you know, through no fault of our own, yeah, um, you're not getting the result, you're not following the plan, yeah. And uh, in that situation, you know, we've 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 basically refunded people's yeah. a portion of yeah. people's fees and, yeah. and said, yeah, um, you know, we can't we can't be yeah we can't help you anymore because because yeah. you know effectively of the situation. So so um, that's yeah, right. we're certainly not in the in the habit of of of, of it's very dissatisfying for us mm-hmm. to charge someone for something that they're not getting value out of. I think that's that's a great point because that's the other. To me, the other part of the reason why we don't charge that first meeting is because, and, and maybe this is just the way my brain works. But if we charge for that first meeting, it then feels as though we have to. The reality is that first meeting for us is a two-way interview. Mm. It, it's it's the, it's the the people sitting there. They're kind of getting a getting a read on us. You know, we're providing some information that will hopefully make their life better in some capacity, regardless of whether they become a client or not. They get a chance to to get a read on us and get a get a feel for whether they think they might want to work with us. We're also using that as an opportunity to get a read on whether we think that we are going to be able to work with this person, and and that's the other part of it. Is like you say, there are there are situations where we might have a meeting with someone, and 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 there's things that we can do, but we're probably just not going to gel. We, you know, even if they do need a financial advisor and they do need the help, we might not be the right fit, or we might get the we, we just get the feeling that. Yes, they do need. To, these are the things that they could do, and that would make a big difference. But I just don't think they're going to go. They're just not going to do these things, and so we're going to be charging them a fee for for something that, in theory, adds value to their life, but in practice, we mm. we know is not going to happen. So, that's to me another big, big part of why we don't charge for that first meeting is that it it wouldn't feel right to me to charge someone a fee for what's essentially us interviewing them to some degree mm. as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's. That's probably a uh, a big part of it as well. Why it it is interesting because I was thinking about this of many other professions that it, it just does become the norm. I know there are financial advisors who charge for first meeting, and it, but it just seems it seems odd to me because I don't know I don't know how you would set the pricing for that, and I don't mm. know how you would 
draft in advance of someone coming in for a meeting whether they are going to be able to get that much value out of that meeting or not it would be a it would be a tricky thing to do if you'd like for us to sit down with you uh in in person or over a zoom meeting as we we do so often with our podcast listeners if you'd like for us to sit down with you and work out how much you need to be able to retire in the future um, the offer is open contact us at podcast at mo50.com.au and uh, and we'll arrange a time to sit down with you and work that out. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Money Over 50 podcast with Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. We look forward to catching up again soon.